You're listening to the Superpower Podcast, Superpower Kids Edition, where author, philanthropist, and Superpower Kids founder, Neverly Rekla, inspires kids to discover their superpowers and change hey the world. Hey everyone, this is your Superpower Kid, Neva Lee Rekla. I'm so excited for today's interview. We are talking with Marty Ward. So Marty has already been on my show before, but I'm having her on again because she's She is so amazing, and today we're going to be talking about Let's Change the World. So Marty has really assisted me getting my book out, When Pigs Fly, The Parent's Guide to Inspire Your Young Entrepreneur. Marty was one of my sponsors, and she definitely helped, and if it wasn't for her, this book probably wouldn't have been out. So without further ado, will you help me welcome our amazing, amazing, amazing guest, Marty. Hi, Marty. Hey, how are you? So I'm wonderful. good. How are you? Wonderful to be with you again, Neva. And so, and so much. I was so excited to get your book, and I read it. And you've got such wonderful advice for parents and and kids, mm-hmm. and how to become an amazing entrepreneur like you, and how to believe in themselves well, and thank find you. their passion. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So today, since we're talking about let's change the world. I want to know, how are you changing the world? And what are you doing in the world now? Mm -hmm. So how I'm changing the world is I'm making bullying obsolete and civility a way of life around the world. And so I work with teachers in America, teachers and administrators and nurses, caregivers, uh, to develop skills so that they can communicate with you guys, you kids, in a way that builds you up, makes you feel great about who you are, develops your confidence, and um, so that you feel great about who you are and and can believe in yourself. So no matter what anybody says to you, that you know who you are. And I've also taken that message to Africa. And I've been um, to Uganda twice, and we have an organization over there, and I've actually reached over 80,000 children in wow. Africa, um, and parents and teachers and pastors with the message that being you matters. Because Neva, what's so important is for parents to give your, the kids a message that they matter so that they won't hurt themselves or others. And mm-hmm. so by doing that, um, kids can believe in themselves, do better academically, they'll cooperate more. But they really need to have that, you know, your wonderful superpower idea and look for the superpowers in their children, their talents, Mm -hmm. abilities and gifts is what I call them. And to do that. And then when they when kids feel that they're seen for who they are, like your amazing parents who have seen you for who you are your whole life and let you just be Neva and let you develop and grow and evolve the way you have. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so your evidence of what can happen when parents allow that to happen organically. Yeah, I agree. So my question is, why do you target kids specifically? Why do I target kids specifically? Yeah, why are kids your, like, market? That's a great question. Um, Well, how this... I guess because I've always worked with children. I've been a teacher. I've been a school-based social worker. Um, I had a sailing school, Neva, you would have loved it, on the Hudson River. And Mm -hmm. I built the programs, designed programs for autistic and emotionally challenged kids. And Mm -hmm. I guess it's because as wonderful as my childhood was, I felt squooshed. I felt Mm -hmm. that I kept being squooshed. You know, you just want to be the center of attention and uh, no, sit right, do this, do that, wear this, do do that, do, you know, and I felt squooshed. Mm -hmm. And when I ran into an article about a little girl named Ashlyn Connor on the internet one day in 2011, and Ashlyn was actually an honor roll student. She was a cheerleader, but she didn't want to go to school that day. And to do that, unfortunately, and very sadly, she killed herself. And I said, that's it. I burst into tears and I said, that's it. I don't want another bright light of a child snuffed out, you know, to, to feel that you didn't have, any choices. And I didn't want that for any other child. So I became impassioned about this mission. And I've been bullied most of my life. 
So I know what that feels like. And what I realized, Neva, is that if you don't believe the bully, then you won't be hurt. Mm -hmm. And so by having kids know that they are okay, that they vow that they matter, and that, they, um, that they're talented, able, and gifted, tag. We tag kids for success, talents, abilities, and gifts. And when they know that they have value, like you do, that you're a writer, an artist, a speaker, um, a trainer, a leader, a guide, and that you have a gift that you give our world as you do. When all kids have that inside, we all came in with talents, abilities, and gifts. Every one of us has them. And it's mm -hmm. just like you figuring out what's your talent, ability, and gift and expressing that to the world. And so mm -hmm. I'm impassioned to have every child know that they matter. Yeah, I agree. I like that. Um, and some kids, I find that in being bullied, you, when you believe what that person is saying, mm -hmm. it hurts more because you're the one who's saying it to yourself on mm -hmm. some level. Um, something my parents have taught me is that bullies or people are just mere images of ourselves. So if somebody's being mean to us, good chances that that is an aspect of ourselves saying, well, maybe this is time for this piece of you to be released mm -hmm. and to go on and not hurt other people and to uplift yourself and uplift others. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like for me, I'll have dreams about some, like if I'm releasing a uh, part of my ego or if I um, just like having fear about something, I have dreams about them when that piece is being released. Mm -hmm. And so it comes up in reality. And so something um, I've learned is that I trust in my higher self to do what's right. And sometimes for me, that's just kind of sitting and talking to myself and going, I am enough and I'm worth it. And sometimes I'll go in and write in my journal or I'll write in like sticky notes mm -hmm. and then I'll place it, the sticky notes all over my room or door saying like, I am enough, I am worth it. And this person who I don't like or this person who hurt me is is just being fearful and they are just taking it out on me and then just kind of giving myself affirmations and i always make sure that if it's on my door it is eye level with me so that no matter what in the morning when i open my door i see it mm. and that way i sit and read it then in the morning i wake up and i mostly have a good day Wonderful. I, yeah. You gave lots of such wonderful tips for, for everyone to, to think about. So that's okay. a wonderful way to handle that. Mm. And, and I agree that what the bully does is awaken us to mm -hmm. us to believe so strongly in ourselves and to mm -hmm. say, you know, that's their opinion. You can't okay. stop the bully from doing or saying whatever they want to do. It's just how you respond. And you have some good strategies that you've shared that tell yeah. people, uh, children and adults, how to manage that. So Thank that's you. wonderful. So we are going to have to take a quick break. And I would love to keep talking about this topic more. Where can people go to find out more about you and your life and how you're assisting other people in the world? Well, if they go to Confidence Builds Success academy.com confidence build success academy.com they can learn all about our programs awesome definitely go check marty's website out because she is so amazing so we'll be right back after the break we've been talking with marty ward about let's change the world we'll be right back are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer -peer learning, intensive one-on-one -on -one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master 
master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. All right, we're back and we've been talking with Marty Ward about Let's Change the World. So Marty, before we get back into talking about our amazing topic, we get to do funny FaceTime. Will you join me? Okay. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> Those are getting funny faces. <sighs> so funny FaceTime is one of my favorite parts because it, for me, it not only encourages adults to have fun and be themselves, but it also encourages kids to stay playful in life. So That's you like it. <laughs> yes, so, it does. So I have a question for you. What advice would you give somebody? So you've given us advice in the previous interview about how kids can like help prevent hurting themselves or help prevent like being hurt by someone else. And I was wondering what your advice is, is maybe if there's listeners out there, like kids or even adults, who know somebody who's being hurt by someone, and maybe they're not, they know what to do to prevent themselves from getting hurt, but they don't know how to help somebody else stop it. What's your advice? Well, you know, it depends on how severe these things are. But in general, if you have a child who is being bullied at school, um, Mm -hmm. in addition to talking to the administration and that kind of thing, it's really you tagging your child for success every day. Mm -hmm. Because again, you can't stop the bully from saying or doing what they want. So it's really the child developing that awareness of their, you know, your Mm -hmm. talent is your is what you love to do, art, music, writing, dance, singing, acting, um, being an athlete, uh, being an organizer, a planner, a teacher, a mentor, because even children like you, you know, are teachers and mentors to other children. And so, or a leader. So that's Mm -hmm. their talent. Their abilities is that they're bright, creative, inventive, imaginative, um, compassionate, understanding, Um, Mm -hmm. and so then the gift that their child gives the world is gives the family is that let's say they're an artist and the joy that their picture brings and the fun that they have when they go to an event where your child is playing soccer or football or basketball or cheerleading or whatever they're doing, you know, Mm -hmm. they're bringing the family together. Um, but the joy, the laughter that the child brings each day, um, and um, the sense of love and caring. And so Mm -hmm. when you can see that in your child, then you can help that child to feel more confident, more secure, so that they don't believe the bully. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that's what's important, is is knowing you gotta define yourself so that other people aren't defining you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And something, so for me, I don't like being put in a box. Mm -hmm. And so like if someone, like I've had times where some people try to explain like my life to me (laughs) when they don't even really know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'll be sharing something with them and then, oh, well, what you mean is, or, Mm -hmm. or maybe it's really this. And some people do that and they're spot on. And then they kind of help me see, oh, maybe I was talking to my ego right then. That's most of my parents. They help me spot that. But there's some people who just kind of like controlling. Mm-hmm. And so, especially me, since I'm still a kid and most of the people I hang around are older than me, they take advantage. And so they kind of treat me as like this mythical creature. I like calling myself a mythical creature because at business conferences or even in life, people don't even know what to do with me. And so they try to explain me. Mm. But I just kind of have this image in my head of like someone 
trying to put me in a box like I'm this caged animal and then me just like breaking it down and shredding it completely because I've done that before and I've been alive long enough to understand that I don't even put myself in boxes (laughs) and so I just kind of I've learned to live life and to help people understand that like hey kids still have the same things and also that doesn't mean that adults don't deserve respect if that makes sense yeah i think it's important obviously what you're saying and even that's what i meant about feeling squished you feel put in a Mm -hmm. box i call it like squished Mm -hmm. and i think that parents this will they won't like what i'm going to say just so you know but they've got to look at where they're not treating you with respect we have Mm -hmm. to look at where we're not treating our child with respect and by defining you in their way or taking your words and turning them around that is disrespectful and parents wouldn't see many, many parents wouldn't see it that way but that 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 is disrespectful and so we Often children will act out and be disrespectful, but if the adult looks at what happened right before that and sees how they, what they said to the child and they look mm-hmm. at it from a fresh perspective, they can see that what they did was not respectful. So yeah. listening to you, honoring and valuing what you say, knowing that it has value and, mm-hmm. um, and leave it there, that is respectful. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, and sometimes people get like, they sometimes get, and this is all people in general, um, for me is that sometimes they get offended when other people like, um, ignore them. And so like, I've done this to people before where, um, I've learned the escalation of force. I've noticed that as I've gotten older, I haven't, I've gotten less afraid of telling people next time you do that, I will either A, hurt you, or B, I will walk away. And so my parents have taught me escalation of force, but they've taught me don't do what you're uncomfortable with and don't do something that you you would be upset if someone did to you. Like certainly I wouldn't like it if someone walked away from me, if I was being mean, but also I would understand that, oh, Maybe they're doing this because I'm still leaning my ego. And so I've learned that there are certain techniques that I use, and it depends on the situation. If it's just being mean, I say, next time you say that, or I say, please stop saying that, or I don't appreciate that you're saying that to me. And then after they keep on saying it or they keep on doing it, I say, next time you do that, I'm going to do this and I'm going to take action. And so but some people get upset that that person walks away or that person takes action because they are either not trained to take a look at what they've done and how maybe they can own up for it. And so they get irritated when somebody walks away from them. And so I've kind of learned that Don't do things that are out of my comfort zone with people. And so I'm mostly comfortable walking away. And that usually stops it. And then if it doesn't, I've also gotten good at hiding from people. I know how to. And so my advice for kids is like, learn simple techniques that you're okay with. And that you can always have like a backup plan that is maybe still in your comfort zone and still something that's easy to do. My parents and I also have codes. And so like we have code magenta, we have code blue. That means I need you right now and please take a step out of your meeting or out of your call. I want your help or your advice on something. And that helps. Mm -hmm. And so just finding simple techniques. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Um, cause that's a simple way of letting your parents know. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and Neva, when, um, when you are, uh, respecting yourself by saying, um, I need to walk away, how mm-hmm. other people react is that's up. To, they, they have the right to feel however they feel. 
But okay. you taking good care of yourself and respecting yourself and saying, I no longer want to be in this situation. I will be leaving. And you turn and walk away. How they respond is up to them. But you're mm -hmm. taking good care of you. Yeah. And that's what matters. Um, exactly. And then having those special codes with parents is a wonderful idea. Um, and so that it's very simple, just code blue, and you don't need a long conversation about what it's all about. And then the parent mm -hmm. responds appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, and, and knows what like, you want. Yep. And you can also establish that with your friends. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's like a situation where you, your friend is talking to someone, and maybe that someone was rude to you or that someone knows someone. And so you want to be sensitive to that person that they're talking to. And you can just establish a code or like my best friend and I established a whole entire language that we talk in. And so we have a bunch of different words and those words we can mix with regular English to say to each other something that we don't want maybe this person to understand because we want to be sensitive to them. And so we do, we do those things because like it helps feel, you feel safe, you know? And then knowing that it's there typically helps prevent the thing from happening. Um, my parents have kind of helped me see something that like, you know how airplanes, they always are prepared for every single crash that could possibly happen. And they're always prepared for something. Typically when you're prepared, nothing really happens, you know? And so being prepared and having that safety helps kind of make it so you're comfortable knowing that you can handle the situation. Good, yeah. yes. Um, and then everyone is doing their best. If you knew better, you'd do better. And that includes parents. If parents knew better, they'd do better. If children knew better, they'd do better. So it mm -hmm. just, in that moment, we're all doing the best we can. Um, and so to have compassion, acceptance, and understanding for others as well, and know that they are doing their best, you may not like what they're saying, but they in that moment are doing what's best for them. And yeah. you have a right to feel how you feel and to take care of yourself in the way in which you need to, as they have the right. Exactly. And sometimes for people, you don't, something I always say to myself is like, I don't know what they're going through. And I'm obviously here to serve a, purpose, a purpose for them. And maybe right now I'm just their punching bag. It doesn't mean I'm going to accept it all the time. But maybe right now they just need somebody who's stable enough for that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and I say, I don't want to assume what they're going through. And so I always just try my best to stay in love and high frequency. And in that, I can assume that maybe they're having a tough day. Maybe someone else said something mean to them. Or maybe they, they're they irritated with me for something I don't know about. And so just kind of making these general assumptions without like fully assuming the story, I find kind of makes it so you can stay in high vibration with people. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, we're all one, Neva. We're all one. Mm -hmm. And really, the only thing that separates one from the other is your talents, abilities, and gifts. Our mm -hmm. special package is what makes you and I different. Not that I'm older than you or anything else, but the only difference between Neva and Marty is that I have a different package than you do. That mm -hmm. talents, abilities, and gifts, which is our soul signature. And accepting yeah. people for who they are as they are and knowing that we're all one, we're all connected, and giving them a break as you give yourself a break, right? You have to be gentle to yourself. So you mm -hmm. were saying, you know, how do we change the world? Well, you change the world first. You've got to be, you got to change you first. What is it that yeah. you need to do for you to grow and develop? What is it that you, what is your passion? What is your interest? And then what is it you're going to develop? And then you can share it with others. Right? Yeah. And to change the world, we have to change ourselves first and then decide. Mm -hmm. So what is your take on the, um, on the environment with all the marching and everything that's going on? 
Um, I don't pay attention to that stuff. Um, I typically only find it out through people I know or through Facebook. And so on Facebook, I simply hit the three dots and I hit hide ad or hide post. And so I don't see anything else regarding that. Um, but I, I just kind of ignore it. And I've learned that maybe this is happening for a reason. And this is maybe teaching people a lesson that and kind of teaching at least our generation to make it something that we want it to be. Mm. And knowing that there are some really amazing people out there Mm -hmm. and there are some really fearful people out there. And um, my mom and I are reading a book right now and it talks about that when you fear something, you manifest it. And so what that means is that if you're fearful fearful of having a horrible environment, fearful of pollution, fearful of everything else that's going on, mm-hmm. we're probably creating it and we are just having trouble realizing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I have the luxury of sitting back and being a 10-year-old. And so I get to just kind of let other people manage it. And trust that we're not going to (laughs) die. And I have the chance to make it what I want it to be. And just because it's something else for other people, and maybe it's bad for other people, it doesn't have to be the same for me. And I'm teaching other people that it can be the same exactly for them. Mm -hmm. But Your your mission is different than... um than others. So you have your mission that you're focused on and Mm -hmm. other children are focusing on the environment and that's their mission. So Mm -hmm. with everybody working together, we can have a better planet. We can have a more civil, um, respectful, harmonious relationships with everyone. What I'm saying now, Neva, is that we want to look for the good in everyone so that we Mm -hmm. can create a good looking world. Exactly. So we want a good-looking world. Mm -hmm. And for some people, the environment that they're used to, like I find that sometimes when we're afraid of change, that change change happens, and it doesn't always look positive. Mm -hmm. But we can make it positive, and we can make it into something, and we can make it into something beautiful and something that we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And so just doing that. um, My friends and I have been talking about going on camping trips. Mm -hmm. And um, I really want to start being active in my life. And so for me, that means I can wake up earlier. And I say this, that the earliest I've been getting up is around 10. And also we've been recovering from traveling. but. I want to, we want to start camping. And so we're going to go down to Flagstaff and go to the lakes and all that. Mm-hmm. And so just kind of going to the beautiful places in the world and realizing that it's okay to have a abundance and be one with the world instead of just living in separation. And this is just our box mm-hmm. or our capsule. Mm-hmm. and we're destroying it. We don't have to. And so that's the things I do. Um, also, like, I find a really easy way to be active is um, just kind of disconnecting from Wi-Fi for a little bit mm. and just kind of setting my electronics aside. Um, and then sometimes I'll watch, like, a crafting video mm. and that, or, like, a playing video and so it will inspire me to go play or or to read or something like that and I find that the more active you are the more in tune you are with your higher self and with the world and I'm learning to be one with the world instead of being over here in the world all the way over here (laughs) wonderful Mm -hmm. yes and nature is a wonderful way to connect 
You know, exactly. you're, you know, when you're watching a crafting video and then you do it, those kinds of things, that's expressing your tags. So mm -hmm. your talents, abilities, and gifts, and that helps you to feel more fulfilled, more nurtured, more supported, because you're mm -hmm. actually expressing who you are in that, in that artwork or, or camping and yes. going for a walk and seeing nature and you get mm -hmm. to see yourself. I agree. And um, I find that, like, this isn't the same for everyone, but, like, painting or just kind of, or writing. Um, I do creative writing or something like that. And then, like, sometimes I'll write stories that start off kind of poor, but then they get, like, they start becoming one with themselves or the characters start becoming one with each other and so or with paintings i'll write a, a good saying or something mm -hmm. on it. so yeah. yeah so so it evolves as you um as you are evolving mm -hmm. exactly i don't know what to do with that Hello. <laughs> you have the office. Yep. so uh -oh. um we were trying not to have that happen, but it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on one sec. I think it's better if I do something. Okay. All right. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> exactly. No. So before we start kind of wrapping up, I want to know what is your advice for parents and kids or adults and kids, all age ranges, mm -hmm. what is your advice on, one, how they can stay in wholeness with each other and with their hearts? And two, maybe what's a simple technique you've learned that maybe you've discovered you're comfortable with when somebody's judging you or doing something you don't really appreciate? Mm -hmm. And maybe it could be like mentally, talking to yourself, walking away, what works for you? Well, I would say what works for me is, um, is breathing. So um, to keep in harmony, um, mm -hmm. what you can do is to take a deep breath. And what that does is it takes you from your limbic brain, which is that bump in the back of your head, into your frontal lobe, which is here, your thinking brain. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so by doing that, now you can respond to your child rather than react to your child. And as a child, you can respond to your parent rather than react to your parent. Mm. And so by being in your thinking brain, because when we're in our limbic brain, we're in our fight or flight brain. And we're going to act that we're going to react rather than respond. Um, and to really have compassion for yourself, Neva, is so important. To have compassion and acceptance for who you are. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, you can stay in harmony with each other from the parent side or the adult side and the child side. Um, and so when I feel, um, a, a lot of times we adults feel out of um, powerless with children, right? We want them to do something and they want to do something else and we feel powerless. But by taking a deep breath in that moment, knowing that you feel powerless in that moment, and you can say to the child, depending on the situation, of course, you know, right now I feel powerless over you. And so I feel that uh, it's, I want to, each of us to take a break and then we'll come back and we'll talk. Mm -hmm. Or um, what I'm hearing is that that is very important to you. You can say to the child, I hear that what you want is very important to you. And what you're doing by that is showing respect that what they want in that moment is very important. So you say, I see that this is very important to you. And now it's not possible to have whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about a way in which we could have it happen for you. Yes, I agree. I like that. and. Um, I want to kind of jump in on the breathing. I love that. Um, something one of our friends who works at Superpower Experts, um, Tatiana, she 
is very awakened and she's just this amazing light of love and high vibrations and she's very very much loving and this amazing person something she taught me is i was feeling very fearful in a moment and i was very afraid of something and she told me that she wants me to start breathing and I started breathing how most people breathe. But then she taught me that that's not the natural way of breathing. And that's how people breathe, like when they're hypo- hyperventilating and when they're going crazy. Like they're just kind of not in their bodies and all over the place. She taught me to when you to breathe and be calm is to when you inhale, your stomach should go out, but when you exhale, your stomach should go in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to force your stomach out. Sometimes you have to force your stomach in, Mm -hmm. but it really helps because like, there's really not an easy way to hyperventilate and not, and it helps show that you're aware and that you have, you're in tune with your body to the point where you can control your breathing like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. another trick you can use is when, you know, when we get very anxious, very, mm-hmm. you know, like you're saying, hyperventilate, if you hold your breath just for a couple of seconds, it'll help your heart to stop pounding. If you go, and it'll help your heart yeah. to stop going like this. And it feels counterintuitive because you want to take more breath, but by holding it just for a second, it'll calm you down. And then mm-hmm. another second and calm you down. Yeah, I like that. Um, I've also learned the four, seven, eight. And so it's very similar. And it's you breathe in for four seconds, then you release for seven, then you hold it for seven, and then you release for eight seconds. No, and great. something I've learned is since I don't like counting and holding my breath at the same time, is I just extend and slow down what I usually do for breathing. And so I, and then release. And then it kind of helps calm down and it also helps go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I use it to go to sleep too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like yeah. Good plan. <laughs> So do you have any last words of advice before we wrap up? I really want everybody to know that they're not broken. Often, Neva, we can feel broken. We can feel there's something wrong with us. But what I say Mm -hmm. is that there's nothing to fix, just more of you to discover. So when you see each situation that can feel not so great in the moment as just a moment for you to learn something new about yourself, rather than that there's something wrong with you, well, then you can have more compassion and understanding for yourself and be able to be gentle with yourself and therefore be able to do better in life. So there's mm-hmm. nothing to fix, just more of you to discover. I love that advice. Marty, thank you so much for coming on the show. But really fast, can you remind people one last time where they can go to find out more about you? Yes, go to confidencebuildsuccessacademy.com. Awesome. Everyone, remember, definitely go check her out because Marty is so amazing. We've been talking with Marty Marty Ward about Let's Change the World. So remember that we all have superpowers and we can change the world by being super kind to each other and in tuning with our hearts. Marty, thank you again. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Neva. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Superpower Up podcast, Superpower Kids edition. Go now to superpowerkids.com and discover your superpowers today. It's